Joe in Missouri, pronouns are he, him. Welcome to the show. You you have something about the definitions of theism and atheism for us to address. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on. Um, yes, uh, so if you and I have had the same experience, read the same books, seen the same, you know, videos, had the same amount of knowledge, experience, and I have reached the conclusion that there is a God and you not reach that conclusion or feel there's insufficient evidence, they're really the same. We're just reached different conclusions. Not, one is not a no, claim and the other no. is a... No, no, sir. No. It's So let's, this is really easy. If you go into a court of law, the burden of proof is on the claim that you're guilty. You don't have to go in and demonstrate that you're innocent. You have to demonstrate that the person is guilty. And the jury, when it comes time to vote, they don't vote between guilty and innocent. There's a presumption of innocence and they vote not guilty and they vote not guilty. Even if they might even suspect the person's guilty because the criteria by which we conclude guilt needs to be strict. This is the same thing. You are saying that God is guilty of existing and I am not convinced. No, I'm just saying that I am convinced. You're not convinced that I am convinced. You're convinced that he's guilty, and I am not convinced that he's guilty. Right. There's no there's no burden of proof on me not being convinced. It's just the same as if you said Bigfoot's real, and I said I'm not convinced that Bigfoot's real. I don't have to prove that Bigfoot's not real. You have to prove that Bigfoot is real. But you're, but you're kind of not, that's not really how it works. You're, you're, it is yeah. exactly yeah, how it, it works. And I've described so, it with two different analogies here. Go ahead, Jim. All right. So there are, to a question, there are, are two values you can accept, true or false. But there are three positions you can actually take. One is, and one of those positions, you can accept the, the proposition is true. The other is you can accept the proposition is false. But the third position is basically, I don't know. And so that's why we, we we try to stay with we don't accept your the evidence for your claim and therefore we don't accept your claim as true. And so we're taking it, I don't know. If someone were to come onto the show and say, I can prove God doesn't exist, our stance would be the same. We don't accept yep. that either as true. Um, and so you would have to prove either either claim, no matter how you look at it. And so we're taking that, that middle position of we don't know. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense, but that's not atheism. That's agnosticism. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. That is atheism. Theism and atheism address belief. Gnosticism and agnosticism address knowledge. Knowledge is a subset of belief. There is no middle ground between I believe and I don't believe. There is a middle ground between I believe and I believe not. So you don't get to tell me whether or not I'm a fucking atheist. And you are in fact wrong, as is demonstrated by the way the majority of atheists are using the term. So in any case, even if you don't want to label me an atheist, even if you want to just say I'm an agnostic and you can sit there in your wrongness and be wrong, you still have a burden of proof for your theism. Can you meet that burden of proof? It's a faulty question. No, sir, it's not. If you claim that a God exists and you want to say that I'm an agnostic and I'm not convinced, I'm now asking you, can you demonstrate the truth of the thing that you claim to accept? None of us can. None well, then can. you're an idiot. You are an idiot to believe something that you cannot demonstrate is true. You are gullible and foolish and you don't understand skepticism and rationality. I, I don't say that to call you names. I say that because I used to be exactly the same way. I believed something mm -hmm. without good reason. And as soon as I cared about what was actually true, and I realized that I didn't have that reason, I stopped being idiotic. I stopped being gullible. I stopped saying, well, nobody can prove that a God exists, but I'm going to believe it anyway. Well, if nobody can prove that a God exists, it is grossly irrational, immoral, incompetent, and unintelligent to believe that you can and and do have good reason to believe it's true. Well, but you're equating God with um, things that are different than God. You're, there's many things, all the important things in life fall under that category that you cannot prove them. 
No, sir, they don't. No, sir, they don't. No, sir, they don't. And I'm not equating God with anything. What you're doing now is dodging and deflecting because you've already said you can't prove that God's real. So you want to try and list other things that you can't prove is real. List one thing that you think is real that you can't prove is real. Love. Love, you can absolutely demonstrate that love is real. We can measure it. We can test it. We can test for it. We can determine when a new mother is not showing love towards a child. We can hook people up to an MRI and find the actual uh, feelings and, and demonstrate what's going on there. But also love being an emotion that we all experience or most of us experience, um, it is absolutely a brain state that is detectable and identifiable. Anything else you want to try and list? Well, let me just ex expound a little on that. Um, no, I don't think I will, actually, because <laughs> yeah. you're not answering the question that I asked. Right. Yeah, anything that's transcendent. Oh, there's all kinds of transcendent things in life that we experience, including this conversation. Something that's transcendent. No, 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 this conversation is not transcendent. Uh. Um, and, and the fact that there are abstractions and transcendent things, they don't actually exist, by the way. It's not like numbers exist, numbers being abstracts. So you used to be a Christian and now you're an atheist, right? Correct. And correct. you change your mind on that. So that's that's a correct. Transcendent event. I'm sorry, what? That's a transcendent event. That wasn't uh -huh. that wasn't a done by. Um, okay, we know that exists matter, space, time, energy. None of those things can create love. Yes, they do. That's what that's what the chemicals we detect in the brain are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are the things that so do. So all the, they, those things so do all the produce things. love. Chemical so brain states, chem, chemical brain states are what we identify as love. Okay, so it's just chemicals. It's not really love. Correct. Then it's just chemicals. Correct. Do you have some evidence that it's more than chemicals? No, you don't. Personal, yes. Every, Everybody, you, you've never been loved or loved somebody? Uh, hello, jackass. I've loved, I'm in love. I've loved many times. I've been loved by many people. When I ask you, do you have some way to demonstrate that it's not just chemicals, and then you say, oh, you've never been loved? You're not listening, and you're not holding up your end of the conversation, and this is definitely not your A game, Joe. So we're going to move on. Well, if I may. Yeah, you may not. No, no, definitely not. Uh, uh, 